Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Come on, how are you excited to be in the house of the Lord one more time? Come on, able to give him some praise. Come on, and all the glory and the honor. Come on, that he so richly deserves. Because he's been just that good. Can I get a witness this morning? Hallelujah. Come on, hasn't the Lord been good to you? Yeah. Come on, come on, don't fool me. Hasn't the Lord been good to you? Come on, he brought us from a mighty, mighty, mighty long way. Hallelujah. We just want to sing this song this morning. Let it rise. Come on, we want to let the glory of the Lord rise among us in this place.
word says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time, isn't it? Yeah. Hallelujah. We get up every morning and we don't know what God has planned for us. But the fact that he had planned for us today was to be in corporate worship yeah. with the saints. Come on, that's a good place to be on today. Come on, you all. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Praise the name of the Lord. His name is worthy to be praised. Woo! And we're just excited to connect with you on Facebook. We say welcome to Bread of Life Missionary Baptist Church located at 1924 West 63rd Street in Chicago, Illinois, where Dr. David L. Sutton is our pastor. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining us, visitors. Thank you so much who are joining us via Facebook, via audio. We just say you're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. And we pray that you will be transformed as a result of hearing the word of God. And we just want to give some shouts out to our pastor who is worshiping with us at home. Come on and let's praise God for our pastor. Serving man of, of the Lord God Most High. We just want to say thank you again so much for joining us. We know it's raining outside, but guess what? Somebody told me that without the rain, we would not never grow. So that means if you came out in the rain today, that means, Andrew, you should probably be a little bit taller than you were before the rain. Come on, give some, give God some praise, somebody. Come on. But guess what? I decided when I gave my hand to the Lord, I said, for God I serve, for God I live, for God I die, I will go in the rain, in the snow, in the sleep, in the shine, when it's hot, when it's cold, when I feel good, when I don't, because God is worthy. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, he is. I said he's worthy. Sister Richard said he's worthy. Sister Helen, he's worthy. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Lord, help us today. But anyhow, we're going to come uh, ask Sister Julie, Judy, to come at this time. She's going to present to us, to our young people, Kingdom Kids. Won't you put your hands together for Sister Julie Davis to come and present our Kingdom Kids lesson for today. God bless you, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. Now, today, we are talking about someone in the Bible who picked their friends. And I picked a couple of friends today. Come on up, because they're going to help me out today. Amen. Amen. And what do you think? I'm going to ask a couple of questions. Okay. What do you think people were doing? I have my two young ladies here, beautiful young ladies. Amen. And what do you think? What was this person doing right here? Yep, this person. They were trying to get an animal inside their boat. They were trying to get what? An animal inside their boat. What kind of animal is it? What kind of animal is it? What, what, what's Fish. in the water? Fish. Fish, that's right. Jesus. Jesus had a friend who was a fisherman. Very good. And we have here, what do you think one of the names of Jesus' friends is? Okay, and that person's name is S-I-M-O-N, which is Simon. Say Simon. 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 That's one of the friends of Jesus. And there's another one we're going to talk about. And Drew. Andrew. Andrew. Very good. Thank you, friend. All right. If you want, you can sit down here. You can stay up here with me. It doesn't matter. 
say up here? Okay, good. Very good. And I love having friends with me as well. And we're talking about today about Jesus calls his disciples. So what does that have to do with the anniversary? I'm going to tell you in a minute. All right. So we're talking about Jesus calling his disciples. And there were two that were that heard the word of John the Baptist, which is Jesus is the Lamb of God. So those two disciples followed Jesus. This, by the way, comes from John chapter 1. It says, when Jesus saw the brothers, he looked at Simon. That's one uh, disciple that the, that the ladies mentioned. He said, you are Simon, the son of Jonah, but you should be called Peter. How surprised Simon was. How did Jesus know his name? You, how did Jesus know his name? We don't know, do we? All right, we don't know. All right. Jesus seemed to know all about him. So when I came up, I had to introduce and tell you my name, right? Did I know your name at first? No. No, I didn't. But Jesus knew Simon's name. And guess what? He knows your name. Amen? Amen. He seemed, so Jesus seemed to know all about him. And Simon, listen, he too believed that Jesus was the Christ. Now, he was just as eager to follow Jesus as Andrew was. Andrew was another name of a disciple. The next day, Jesus started back to his house in Galilee. With him were, how many is this lady? Three. Three. Okay, good. Three new friends. Wow. As they walked along, they met a man named Philip. He lived in the same town as Simon and Andrew. And to Philip, Jesus said, follow me. And Philip did. Now, how many, how many? Four. He has four. Great job, ladies. And as Philip walked with Jesus and the other three friends, he marveled. What does that mean to marvel? He just was in awe at what the disciple and what Jesus spoke. Surely this was the promised Savior and King. Philip was so thrilled, he went to find his friend Nathaniel. Now, when you see a good thing, don't you want to tell your friends? Yes. Yes, I know I do. I know I like a certain popcorn shop on the south side. And I tell my friends about that popcorn shop, right? Or you tell your friends about your favorite candy bar, right? Yes. Yeah, that's what I do too. So to Philip, Jesus said, follow me. And Philip did. And as Philip walked with Jesus and the other three, he marveled. So Philip was so thrilled he went to find his friend. His friend's name is Nathaniel. Philip told him, guess what? Guess what? He said, guess what? We have found the one Moses and the prophets wrote about, Jesus of Nazareth. Because Philip knew the scriptures, he knew the Bible, he said that a prophet had written that the king of Jews would be born in Bethlehem. So he asked Philip, hmm, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip didn't waste a minute. He just said, come on, just, just, just come on. Come and see. Because Philip was so eager, Nathaniel went along. And when Jesus saw Nathaniel, he said, look, an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathaniel was said, he was astonished. How do you know me? It's that. That's another person Jesus knew, right? Before he even met him. Before Philip called you, Jesus said, I saw you sitting under that big tree. I know how many friends he has now. How many? Five. Five? Yes, he has five friends now. Great. Great job. How could Jesus know where Nathaniel was and what he was doing? Because he saw him. He did. He saw him. At once, Nathaniel believed that Jesus had come from God. With joy, he said, Master, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, do you believe that just because I said I saw you under the fig tree, that you believe you shall see greater things than these? And so here's the question. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? That is the question. 
And the question, I'm going to rephrase it to tie it in. Can any good thing come out of West Inglewood? Can any good thing come out of Inglewood? Come on and see. Now here's the answer that Jesus said. Do you believe just because I said I saw you under the fig tree? You shall see greater things than these. Guess what, everybody? That's the answer. You're going to see greater things than these. And here is part of the greater. Amen? Yeah. And our young people. Amen? You're going to see greater than this. When somebody kind of, kind of, hmm, they're from the wrong neighborhood. Nothing good can come out of there. You can say, come on and see. Amen? Amen. Amen. So what was wrong with Nazareth? Hmm. These were people that were not taken seriously in one sense. Good, they weren't good. They had irreligion. They had laxity of morals. They were not good, good people. They came from, Jesus came from that neighborhood. So Jesus didn't come from a good neighborhood either, everybody. So come on. So what good can come out of Nazareth? Come on and see. Amen. Bread of life. We are here for such a time as this. And we are here for greater. That is our story for today. And I will not forget to talk about Jesus. For what, are, what is our message? Can you read some of it? For God so loved you that he gave his one and only son. John chapter 3, verse 16. Very good. Thank you. For God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, if you will believe in him, you will not perish, but you will have everlasting life. And I ask the children, any child can come and accept Jesus Christ. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Come on, you all. Let's give Sister Julia another hearty ovation. And let's give her helpers a hearty ovation. Yes, yes, Sister Julie, we just love you. We are so excited to have Sister Julie here, aren't we all? Come on, come on, let's praise the Lord one more time for Sister Julie and our kingdom friends. And so at this time, without any further ado, we're going to have Andrew come, our announcing clerk for today. Brother Andrew to come and give us our announcements. Come on, put your hands together. Sunday! Yes! Yeah. Yeah. My, my favorite Sunday. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. Mine too. Announcement Sunday, October 24th, 2021. For updates on COVID-19, go to chicago.gov slash coronavirus. Adult Sunday School Class dial 213-493-0606 and enter access code 595-844-455 at 9 a.m. each Sunday and use the same conference card information for Sunday morning worship at 10.50 a.m. and on Wednesdays for Bible study at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Youth Sunday School Class Dial 646-749-3112 then enter access code 231-807-013 at 9 a.m. each Sunday. Worship services stream each Sunday at 10.50 a.m. via Facebook Live on the Bread of Life page. If you are worshiping with us via Facebook Live, please share this service with family and friends and share your prayer requests in the comment section of Bread of Life's page. We have met consecutively for 19 months for workers' conference meeting. So with that said, this month's meeting scheduled for Monday, October 25th is canceled. The family of Bread of Life is saddened at the passing of Mr. Arnold Sanders, who is our member, Pixie Sanders' father. 
The celebration of life service is as follows. Saturday, October 30th, wait at 10 at 11 a.m. Home going service at 12 p.m. at the Kenwood United Church of Christ located at 4600 South Greenwood Avenue. Let us be supportive, and please remember Sister Pixie and family in prayer during their time of bereavement. It is now time for our offering. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Honor the Lord with thy wealth and with the first fruits of all your crops. Will a man rob God? Yet he have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have you robbed me? In tithes and offerings. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Give, and he'll give it back to you. Press down, shake it together, and running over. Shall man give unto your bosom? For with the same measure that you need with all, it shall be measured to you again. For God loves a cheerful giver. Yes. Amen. Yes. Then it goes on to say, how may I give? You may give via pushpay.com. You may give by texting BOL Chicago to 77977 on your phone. Or you may give via U.S. mail by simply sending a check or a money order to Bread of Life Church, 1924 West 63rd Street in Chicago, Illinois, 60636. Come on, you all. Let's give our Andrew another hearty ovation. Come on, you all. You can do that than that. I appreciate you more than you know. It's just exciting to see our young people growing up and doing the things that we have been doing for so long. And sometimes I've had to pull on Andrew at the very last minute. And I just want you to know I'm taking notice of it and I really appreciate you for doing that. Amen. God uses our children. That's what the word says. He uses our young people because they are strong. Am I right, teacher? He uses our young people because they are strong. And so thank you so much again, Andrew. And at this time, come on, praise team. Come on back. We're going to do one more selection, after which we will, um, after that, we'll have our speaker of the hour, which will be Reverend Wendell McFadden, to come and share the word of God yes. the Lord has given unto him on today. Won't you put your hands together for our praise team? And after that, we'll be Reverend Wendell McFadden with the word.
song doing great things for me. Come on, don't, don't be quiet on the amens now. Right. Come on, come on, preach it. Amen. 
Amen. Yes. Come on, it, it, we don't always line up. Now, what happened was Solomon, Solomon disobeyed God by marrying foreign wives, right? Yes, he did. Uh, and when he married those foreign wives, guess what? They brought their false gods along with them. Have mercy. Have mercy. And as a result, false worship began to infect and spread throughout the nation of Israel. Yes. Uh, their disobedience and idol worship angered God so much. Somebody say, how much? How much? Oh, that he rose up foreign armies to come in and destroy their land. The temple along with it was destroyed as well. Mm -hmm. Now, many other people were taken against their will, uh, kidnapped, taken captive into a foreign land called Babylon. Yes. All right, y'all pay attention because I'm going to ask y'all some questions when I get done. All right, now, it's in Psalm 137, they found themselves sitting by the rivers of Babylon, uh -huh. weeping when they remembered Zion, uh -huh. weeping when they remembered what was. It was there they asked the questions, how can we sing uh -huh. in a strange place, right? Yes. Amen. They were in a strange land. We also discovered that some of us may be in a strange place. Yes. Yes. Now, amongst those who were held captive and, and taken to Babylon were Daniel uh -huh. and three of his friends. Remember that? Yep. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Mm -hmm. They too were in a strange place. Why were they in a strange place? This wasn't a field trip where afterwards they could return back home, was it? They were forced to live in a foreign land. And the king and his people wanted them to forget everything they ever known about life in Jerusalem. He wanted to change their name, their language, their diet, their customs, uh -huh. their values, and their beliefs. Yeah. Yeah. He wanted them to adapt to and embrace living life as the Babylonians lived. Right. Well, Come on, y'all still with me? Yes. This king set out to change their culture. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Culture change. Uh -huh. yes. Culture change. And Young people, the same thing, guess what is happening to you today? Uh huh. At church, we all have the same beliefs, right? Pretty much. Mm -hmm. At home, we may also have the same beliefs. But, when you, but what you may have noticed uh, when you go out into the world, as a Christian, you're in a strange place. Yes. And just as a king desired to change the culture of Daniel and his friends, the world desires to change your culture, young people. Yes. Yes. It wants you to forget all the things that you were taught. Yes. Your customs, uh -huh. your beliefs, uh -huh. your God. Have mercy. And what I want to do this morning is to equip you with five things to help you resist being changed by the culture around you. Okay. Five things. These are my five points. Uh, I want to help you turn that thing around. Amen. Yes. Instead of you being changed by the culture, our aim is to see the culture changed by you. Yes. Come on now. Okay? Good. So, again, I'm going to share five things about Daniel that literally helped him change the culture in which he lived. And if you embrace them, uh, you can change the culture in which you live as well. Amen, that's right. Alright, so the first way, young people, you can change the culture is to have values. Somebody say values. values. Okay, what are values? Values are basic fundamental beliefs that guide or motivate attitudes or actions. 
Values describe the personal qualities we choose to embody to guide our actions. The sort of person we want to be. The manner in which we treat others and ourselves. And the manner in which we interact with the world around us. Now, when Daniel was first taken into Babylon, uh, they were trying to change what he ate mm -hmm. and what he drank, right? Y'all know the story. Uh, they were trying to get him to eat and drink things that went against his faith and his religion. Mm -hmm. That's right. But listen to Daniel's response in Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. But Daniel was determined not to defile himself by eating the food and wine given to them by the king. Right. What does it mean to defile himself? To make foul, mm. dirty, mm. to pollute, mm. tarnish, or corrupt. So Daniel was determined not to corrupt or tarnish himself by eating and drinking what was given to him by the king. You see, Daniel had values that were non-negotiable. Yes. yes. Young people, you must have values yes. that are non-negotiables in your life. Yes. We can't afford to live life as if just anything goes, can we? We have to predetermine and establish what we believe and what our position is on things ahead of time. Right. You got that? Ahead of time. Amen. Yes. What am I saying? We can't wait until temptation is knocking at our door before we decide if we're going to open up and let it in. Come on, preacher. That's it. Yes. You can't wait until they pass the weed. Come on. And you in the circle. Uh huh. To determine or not if you're going to partake in drug use. That's right. You can't wait until you're pressured into having sex. Uh -huh. Come on, when, you, when you're somewhere you got no business being uh -huh. and nobody's at home, mm -hmm. to, to decide yes. if you're going to engage in sexual activity before marriage. Yes. Is this making sense? Yes. By that time, it's probably too late. Yes. Hallelujah. Point two. The second way we can change the culture is to have courage. Right. Come on, somebody say have courage. have courage. Now, what was happening in chapter 3, just to kind of recap, King Nebuchadnezzar uh, erected a golden image of himself yes, he and did. commanded all the people of the land to bow down and worship his image when they heard the music. Right. But Daniel and his boys was like, nah, bro, we ain't going. We only worship the true and living God. Amen. Amen. So listen to their response in Daniel 3rd chapter verse 17. He says, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. I like how they still gave him his respect, even though they... <laughs> He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear, your majesty, they still give it on this, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. That's right. That's right. That's some old talking. Yeah, that is old. Come on, they had courage, right? Yes. So just as King Nebuchadnezzar presented his golden image before the people and commanded them to bow, guess what, young people? The world has its own images. Come on now. And it wants to present before you and decree that you too shall bow down to it. You may be asking, what images? I see some of y'all looking at me funny. The stereotypical propaganda of those who control media circulate. Come on, the negative images on the television. Come on, the negative images on social media. Come on, the negative images portrayed through our music. Come on, the negative images we...
We can write you are comfortable operating mediocre mm -hmm. in mediocrity. Wow. Just satisfied being average. Mm -hmm. Well, doing just enough to get by. Mm -hmm. Unmotivated. Yep. Seemingly uninspired. To reach for greatness. That's right. Young people, listen. If you're going to change the culture, you have to be the best version of yourself you can be. Yes. Yes. You have to raise the bar. Mm -hmm. You have to set the standard. Look, don't follow the train. You blaze the trail. Right. Come on, you're the light. Come on, the Bible says you're the light. Come on, you see in the earth. Come on, whatever we do in word or deed, the word says what? Do it all into the glory of God. And we want to
And it's basically a, 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 a program that allows us to just have audience participation. And at the end, we give awards out to the students who get the most right. Uh, so we definitely want to start implementing that again. So I, I do want to say to the parents, we, we do have things in place, but we need you to bring your kids. Amen? Amen. We, we got many teachers working hard and, 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 and trying to be creative ways to, to keep your, your kids engaged, but it, it matters not if you don't bring them here. It matters not if you don't have them log in to the Bible study. Amen? Say it 
louder. <laughs> Committed. Uh, not quite the answer we're looking for, but thank you so much. Come on, try again. Let's give our another chance. I'm going to read the question. Listen carefully. So it's not the word committed, okay? I'm going to read it again. The Bible says Daniel was faithful, always responsible, and completely trustworthy, obedient. Olivia? I'm sorry. Paige, what's the answer, baby? Did she say trustworthy? That's the answer. Come on and give me. <laughs> okay, we almost done. Okay, number five. Oh Lord, <laughs> technology. I love it. But it do what it wanted to do. Daniel was determined not to defile himself by eating and drinking the king's food. True or false? Yes. What's your name? Forever. Forever. Oh, all right. What's the answer, Forever? True. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. Yay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because <laughs> taking up too much time here. Yeah. Okay. King Nebuchadnezzar wanted to. King Nebuchadnezzar wanted to change their was it their customs, their diet their values and beliefs for all of the above. King Nebuchadnezzar wanted to change what? All of the above? What? All of the above. Absolutely. Okay, number seven. When the officers went to Daniel's home looking for him, he was found in his room. A, reading the Bible, B, singing, or C, praying. What's your name? Paige. Paige, what's the answer? Forever. Oh, my Lord, forever. Forever? Okay, what's the answer? Number A, reading the Bible. Come on, put your hands together for forever. Oh, I'm so lucky. These kids are paying attention. Okay, if we have values, courage, integrity, a spirit of excellence, and spiritual discipline, a, we will be changed by the culture around us. B, we can change the culture around us. C, you will be promoted just like that. Mason, what's the answer? Hmm? Let me read it again. Okay. If we have values, courage, integrity, a spirit of excellence, and spiritual discipline, a, we will be changed by the culture around us. B, we can change the culture around us. Or C, you will be promoted just like Daniel. B. All right, come on, come on, let's get up the face song. Okay. Two more questions and then we're done. Where was Solomon's temple built? A, Jericho. B, Jerusalem. C, Judea. Uh, D, Judah. Yes, forever. Number A, no. Yeah, uh, is it Olivia? Yes, Olivia. What's B? This is right. It's B. It's Jerusalem. <laughs> okay. Last question. Okay. Last question. Those refusing to bow down and worship the golden cat, excuse me, golden image, were thrown into the fiery furnace. Is that true or false? Is it forever? What is it forever? True! Yeah. All right. Okay, let us put our hands together for our young people. Pay attention. Uh -uh. Now I'm going to turn it back over to Reverend Wendell.
So, so again, in order to not be changed by the culture around us, but in order to that the culture would be changed through us, uh, number one, you need to have values. Number two, you need to have courage. Number three, you need to have integrity. Number four, you need to have what? A spirit of excellence, right? And the fifth one was what? You need to have a spiritual discipline. discipline. Yeah. Amen. Come on, give God some praise. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And then I had to do a part two. My, my Facebook family that missed, <laughs> missed that. We'll do a continuation. Can we have everybody standing, please? We just want to give the invitation. We don't want to take for granted that Everyone has come to know the Lord. So we want to make sure that we extend the invitation and allow this opportunity for you to come to get to know the greatest. Amen. I need y'all to make some noise when I say that. Come to get the greatest. Come on. Come on. Who is the greatest? I love the Bible. The Bible says that God so loved the world so much. Somebody say, How much? That He gave His only begotten Son. That whoever believe in him should not perish, but guess what? They'll have everlasting life. Come on, whoever believe with him. Come on, it doesn't matter what, you know, if you're a girl, a boy, a man, a woman, whoever. It doesn't matter your race. Come on, the gospel is flex fit. It's for all of us, right? Come on, it fits us all. And right now, we just want to allow you an opportunity to get to know him.
thank you for the people who preached today and the people who came. We thank you for your word and your worship. We thank you for the love that you have brought us. We thank you for helping us out during this pandemic and everything. In Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen.